All right, Merry Christmas Eve. We're so excited to be together tonight, to be here for Current's very first Christmas Eve gathering. Merry Christmas. Current is a community following Jesus together, and you're welcome wherever you are on your spiritual journey. We're super excited. We have a fun night ahead of us. We've got Christmas carols, we've got Christmas scripture, and we've got appetizers for everyone outside in the lobby afterward. We hope you'll stay and hang out with us. With sparkling cider. Who likes sparkling cider? Woo! We all like sparkling cider. Uh, we're also really excited to have the opportunity to be all together here. Kids, we're so grateful to be able to worship God together with you tonight. And we actually have some of our big kids that are going to read scripture for us tonight. Grace is going to start us off. Let's give her a warm welcome. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Sudden, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end.
triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and light To all He brings Raised with healing In His wings Mild He lays His glory by Born and man No more may die Born to raise The sons of earth Born to second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear. Savior's birth and long lay the world in sin and never finding till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill Oh, 
Verses 1 and 2. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious, glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness on them has on them has life. Amen. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. Can we give all the readers one more big round of applause? You guys all did an awesome job. It's no small thing to get up in front of this many people. So thank you guys. What, what a joy. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's really fun to be celebrating with you. Um, real quick, I do want to say uh, there is no uh, in -gath uh, in-person gathering tomorrow or next week. But next week, you can look online. There will be a, a devotional for you to download if you want to kind of celebrate that way. But no in-person gathering tomorrow or the following week. Uh, one of the things I love most about Christmas are all the Christmas lights. And uh, I got into an interesting, semi-lively debate, maybe you could say it, uh, at Thanksgiving with a guest who was saying, you cannot put up the Christmas lights until the month of December. December 1st, that's the first day you can put up the lights. And I was just like, you know what? They're going up tomorrow. Like, because they can't go up soon enough in my mind. Uh, I love the Christmas lights. And not just because they're just festive and fun in and of themselves, but really Christmas lights do help us celebrate what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. Um, you know, it's cold outside, but there's something about seeing the lights that brings the warmth of joy, hope, peace, love, all these things that Christmas is meant to celebrate. Because that's the thing with Christmas lights. They're not, it's not, you know, putting up Christmas lights isn't just a tradition we just kind of sort of do because, well, we should do it. It really stems from what it's all about to begin with, and that is on Christmas we remember that God sent his light into the world. The baby Jesus would grow up later and teach, I am the light of the world. And so today, in a much, more, much shorter fashion, because we know, I know kids are here and all that, and we're itching to celebrate Christmas and all that, I want to take a, sh a shorter few moments to remember and reflect on the wonderful promise of the light of Christmas and consider why that matters uh, wherever we are in our spiritual journey. So let me say a quick prayer, and then we'll, we'll get into the Word for a moment. Uh, Father, I want to pray a prayer of hope, peace, love, joy over everyone who is here this evening. Uh, I imagine many people have brought in with them just, you know, life struggles, hardships. Would this time and, when this, and would leaving from this time be just, just really joy-filled for them? Uh, we thank you for the gift of Christmas, the light, your son, Jesus, that you've given us. Would you give us your spirit now as we look to your word and try to understand it for ourselves? We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to consider from this very famous Christmas text that was the last text read for us, the wonderful promise of the Christmas light, the light of Christmas. But in order to first understand the wonderful promise of light, we need to recognize that there is darkness. There's darkness in the world. Uh, this text says that. It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. 
Uh, I, I really leaned into Christmas candles this year. Uh, a few years back, Cindy convinced me to get uh, a plastic Christmas tree. We used our Costco rebate card and got one of those big, co- you know, Costco Christmas trees. And I was fighting that tooth and nail. I didn't want to get a plastic Christmas tree because I'm just like, you can't do that. But you know, this many years after that, I'm all about the, the plastic Christmas tree because it's just like setting that thing up is so easy, especially while the kids are so young. I don't have to go to the store or go cut one down as I know some of you guys you lumberjack yous are doing. Um, We just set it up. But the reason why I was fighting it so much is because uh, I was like, no, I don't want to lose the smell of Christmas. Because, you know, the real Christmas tree, you get the smell and all that. So, all right, we're going to lean into candles. So, I got candles, Christmas tree candles, smelling candles. Cindy got one, and then I just bought like five, and we're just smelling Christmas. But it's been really fun having candles around. I haven't really been big on candles. Like the only time I've ever lit them is like when the power goes out, you know. But we've had these candles around. It's been wonderful. And I remember one night I was just sitting there and I, you know, was reading on my Kindle. And, and, you know, I was just looking around at these candles, you know, with their therapeutic nature. And just, and it, it, I was reminded of how easy it is for us modern people to take modern lights for granted. I mean, in the ancient world, when this text was first written, I mean, this is 700 years before Christ, uh, when the sun went down, your day was done. And whatever faint source of light you may have had was all the more precious because the ancient world really understood that, that much of the world is just dark. And I feel like kind of in a metaphorical meta way, I feel like our own society has come to grips with the fact that we live more in darkness than we probably have tended to realize. What do I mean by that? I feel like the last two years, our society has, a bit, has had a bit of a wake-up call in terms of like not being as in control as I think we otherwise probably would think ourselves to be. You know, with the pandemic, civil unrest, political unrest, uh, mental illness just surging way up, That's nothing to say about all the relational strains that are just out there and data is showing. It's it's just been, it's been a real rough season. And in some ways for our especially comfortable Silicon Valley, you know, society, we're realizing, yeah, we aren't as much in control as we probably otherwise would think to be. And much of the pain and suffering in the world, we really are powerless to fend off. And, you know, we all know this at some point in our lives anyways, whether or not it's kind of at the cultural level, societal level, or just when it catches up with us personally, when things are hard. I know many of you have been through those sorts of things, but there's a lot of darkness out there. Uh, I came across a quote from uh, Bill Gates who was uh, in an interview, and he kind of opined on the state of world affairs. And here's, here's how he put it. He said, the reason some of the big problems we know exist are essentially unsolvable is because of people. It's because of people unwilling and unable to work together. And I feel like that thought kind of starts to get at what the Bible really teaches from, from cover to cover. And that is that ultimate darkness isn't just out there or external circumstances, but ultimate darkness actually is here, inside. It's, it's, it's within And when you start to think about where we look to for hope, whether that darkness is external or things that we're wrestling with just because we're human and that that sort of deal, you think about the places where we look for hope, there's not a lot of hope to really grasp from. Where where do we look for hope? You know, in technology? You know, as wonderful wonderful as technology is, it also has a double-edged sword. Do we look for hope in the economy? Well, looking at 2023 is interesting in that regard and further out. Do we look for hope in politics? You know, this is more personal to me. I studied political science at Cal. Some of you know that if you've been coming to Current. I've shared this before. Um, It's always kind of funny when I share that I studied politics at Cal, and when they find out that I'm a pastor, they usually furrow their brow. Folks are just like, connect those dots. Like, how how did you study politics, and now you're you're a pastor? Um, For me, I'm all about, the politics is wonderful. We need good people in politics. At the same time, from my humble perspective, and not just from my study, but just reading the news today, it's just like, no, politics falls so utterly short of the hope we truly need, however you measure that hope. So where do we look for for hope? And then what is the hope we're ultimately longing for? Is the hope we're ultimately longing for to live a happy life, a comfortable life? The Bible would say, God through his scriptures would say, if that's our ultimate hope, we're aiming too low. And so 
there's darkness in the world, but now we're going to talk about this wonderful, wonderful light, because that's the other side of these verses. It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. I love that way it's phrased, a light has dawned, meaning light has come from outside the world. Help has come from another place. Now, real quickly, the context for this ancient text was the prophet Isaiah was speaking to a people, God's people, the Israelites, when they were staring down the Assyrian army that was on the precipice of conquering them and taking them into exile. I don't have time or even, frankly, the desire to tell you how terrible the Assyrian army was back in those days. We'll, we'll leave that out. But all this is to say is they were faking. It. If you want to talk about darkness, this was a deep darkness that they were facing. But what's fascinating about this promise that God gives in the middle of that deep darkness is he doesn't just go, you know what, I'm going to deliver you from them. I'm going I'm to make it go okay for you. It's not going to be that bad. You're going to come back out of exile, which, by the way, he goes on later to say, wonderful as that is. But in the moment when he's facing, when they're facing all of this, they get a far greater, infinitely greater promise than even being delivered out of the craziest depths of darkness that they are facing. So is that registering for a second? I mean, think about that. Whatever darkness you or I face in this life, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say it's probably not in comparison to what these ancient people were facing when the Assyrian army was looking to conquer them. Wouldn't you say? And yet, the promise that came to them and through them to us that God had was way better than them just being delivered out of that scary, dark situation. Is that, is that tracking? And what is this wonderful promise? Well, it's this light that Isaiah would go on to say in verse 6 of Isaiah 9, for to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is an incredible promise. If it's true, and we start to get our minds, let alone our hearts around it, it's the promise of no matter what it is you're facing right now, whatever depths of, of darkness that perhaps you're facing right now, whether it's relational, whether it has to do with your career, or maybe it has to do with an addiction, maybe it has something to do with a physical ailment. Whatever it is, God is saying here, he's given you, he's given me something far greater than just meeting that need, which by the way, he has desire to do. He has given us his son. Uh, when the child Jesus grew up, he would later actually quote this text early on in his teaching ministry, Matthew 4, you can look at it later if you want. He would read this text that we had read, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And he essentially went on to say, that's me, I'm here. And then he went on to say, repent therefore for the kingdom of heaven has come near. He was saying, okay, so that what this all means then is turn back to God, turn back to his ways, to following him. Jesus would later say, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me never will walk in darkness, but will live, will have the light of life. This is really the gospel promise. The light of Christmas is that God sent his son into the world to live the life that we cannot live, that we should live, but we don't. And to die the death that we deserve. In other words, to take away the separation that we have from God, from living apart from him, rejecting him. And Jesus made it possible for us to come back to him, something way better. The text is saying here in our Isaiah 9 scripture, way better than even being delivered of whatever depths of darkness you or I could face. That's the promise of Christ. That's the wonderful light that we celebrate today. And it's something that's available to you tonight. You can receive him today. It's said that to all who receive him, to all who believe on his name, he gives the right to become children of God. You can receive him tonight. Receive what he did on the cross for you, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life with him. That is what not only Christmas is about, that is what all of Christianity is about. And it's a free gift of grace. That's another wonderful tradition we have, gifts. I'm all about the gifts. My kids are even more about the gifts. Why do we celebrate gifts? Well, it's a reminder of the greatest gift, the free gift of God sending his son to give eternal life to all who believe in him and receive what he did on the cross for him. And then for those of you who have received him, I would just say, don't you see that whatever darkness maybe you're facing now, 
or maybe you go on to face into the future, really at the end of the day, it's not darkness at all because God's light shines even there. The promise isn't necessarily that he's going to deliver you from whatever hardship it is, external circumstance, whatever that might be. The promise is even greater. God will be with you, Emmanuel. And not only that, he will be with you in the sense of being his, your wonderful counselor, your mighty God, your everlasting father, your prince of peace. So you can trust him. You can, you can lean on him. As the band comes forward uh, and the ushers begin to pass out these little candles that we have, uh, we went digital because we are renting space and we want to be very mindful of our landlords here. Uh, we got these little candles for you, the team got, which are, are wonderful. It's going to be, uh, I encourage you as you grab yours, go ahead and turn yours on because we'll, we'll use this to celebrate the rest of our, our short time together. Um, what, we, what my hope is, is in a small symbolic way, this can remind each of us of the true light of Christmas. When you see this, and, or, or when you see lights out uh, for the, the Christmas season, you will be reminded of God's light, his promise. And as these are being passed out, I want to offer three reflections on light, the goodness of light, things to kind of meditate on, chew on later. Remember that light brings life. You know, if not for the light of the sun, there would be no life, right? Well, in the same way, if not for the light of God the Son, there would be no eternal life. And so we remember that there's life in the light. We also remember that the light shines truth. I mean, you think about it. If we live in a dark world, where do we go to look for the ultimate path of good and, and what's right? The moral majority? Our own personal whims? Well, the promise is that God is our light. He shows us the path of goodness and truth and, and love. And so we can follow him. He gives us his word to help us do so. And then finally, light brings beauty. And I love this thought because if you think about it, light ultimately is revealing what is otherwise not visible. The beauty behind it all. And, and the thought there for those of us who are followers of his is we receive his life and reflect his life to others so that we can make his love, his joy uh, made known. Uh, I want to finish with this last verse that I just think is so beautiful. It's literally the very next verse from the ones that we had read. So we, we had read verses one and two. Here's verse three of Isaiah nine. And listen to the emphasis of joy here. You have enlarged the nation, increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. That's a profound statement. That's a very audacious thing to say to a people that is staring down a conquering nation, wouldn't you say? And yet that's how beautiful and, and powerful the promises that God gives us in this Christmas light. And so whatever darkness you're facing right now, I hope you can cling to his light, remember his goodness through it. And we can remind our little ones who are here uh, of, his, of his goodness too. So let's pray, let's stand, and then we'll close our time singing together. Father, thank you so much for sending your son, the light of the world, to give us the promise of, of life, eternal life in him. Father, would you help us this Christmas uh, not just go through the motions, of putting up lights or, or passing out gifts, but you, would you help us in some small way at, at, at least to remember the ultimate gift, the ultimate light that is your son, Jesus, sent for us. We love you. We thank you that we get to celebrate this together as a community, as a church. Please go before us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, right. Shepherds quake at the 
Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing, in heaven, heaven and nature sing. And joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding No more let sins and sorrows grow. No thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. And he rules the world with truth and grace. He makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. The wonders of his love, the wonders of his love, and the wonders, wonders of his love. Thank you so much for coming. Merry Christmas, everybody. Do stay around. There's some drinks, Martinelli's, and treats that you guys can enjoy out there. We hope you hang out for a little bit. Remember, no in-person gathering tomorrow or next week. Merry Christmas, current family. Love you guys.